Hello and welcome to Blender. This very basic tutorial is made for Blender newbies, and it is focused on creating content for Second Life, or for similar game engines. I assume that you already have downloaded Blender, and maybe you even have just opened it for the very first time in your life. So, let's start our journey, now. This is Blender's default welcome screen. This screen is separated into five sections. Most of the time you will spend in the 3D viewport. That is the area where you create and modify objects. Initially the viewport is populated with a camera, a light source, and a simple cube. Right now the cube is selected. This is indicated by a bright orange outline, which is displayed around the object. If you want to select another object in the viewport, then you can do this by clicking on it with the right mouse button. Note that the camera and the light source are also objects, and you can select them as well. And as you can see here, the last selected object will again be outlined in a bright orange color. Let's select again the cube, with a right mouse click. In the middle of the object you see a small colored coordinate system. This is the object manipulator. Right now the manipulator allows you to move the object around in space, along one axis, by clicking on one of the arrows, and while holding down the mouse button, dragging the mouse. And as soon as you release the mouse button again, the object will rest at its new position. If you made a mistake, then you can undo your operation by hitting Ctrl C, on the keyboard. And by default, Blender allows you to undo the last 32 operations. In the footer of the viewport you find some manipulator control icons, where you can switch the manipulator features between moving, rotating, and scaling. Also note, the white circle at the center of the manipulator can be grabbed as well, to transform the object relative to the current view plane, instead of transforming it relative to a single axis. Left to the manipulator control icons, you find the viewport shading type. The most important shading types are, solid, for working on your model, and textured, while you work on your textures. Finally. The viewport has several interaction modes, for working on different aspects of your objects. The most important modes are, object mode for organizing objects within your scene, and edit mode for modifying objects on vertex level. And when you are working with rigged meshes, then the weight paint mode becomes important as well. The viewport also has a set of context-sensitive footer menus, containing functions for viewing, selecting, and adding more objects to the scene. Since you are working in three dimensions, you will also want to inspect your objects from different points of view. So you can change the viewpoint angle by clicking on the middle mouse button, and then drag. And you can zoom closer to the object, by rolling the middle mouse wheel. Then you can adjust the viewport to put your current selection into the center, by clicking the dot on your number pad. Finally. If you are the lucky owner of a three-dimensional navigation device, such as the Space Navigator for example, then you also can use that gadget for flying around in your scene. The viewport also has two sidebars. On the left side you already can see the tool shelf. Here you find a huge amount of context-sensitive functions and options. The tool shelf is organized into a number of vertical tabs. And within each tab, you find several tool panels for various purposes. You can expand and collapse these panels, and you can even rearrange their order. 
If you are short of display space, then you can click on the separation line to the view canvas and drag it to the left until the navigation bar collapses into a tiny little plus sign. And you can open the tool shelf again, either by clicking on that plus icon or by hitting T on the keyboard. You may have noticed yet another plus sign on the top right corner of the view canvas. This is the collapsed properties sidebar. Here, you find general information about the currently selected object, like location, rotation and scale values. And you also find many more options related to how your scene is displayed in the view canvas. You can collapse or expand the properties sidebar with the mouse, just like you already know from the tool shelf. Or by hitting the N key on the keyboard. And of course you can display the tool shelf and the properties sidebar at the same time, if you like to do so. So far for the viewport. But there are four more sections on the Blender screen. So, let us inspect now where these sections are, and what you can do with them. Below the canvas, you find the Timeline section. This section becomes very important when you start with animating your objects. But for now we ignore this section. Actually, let me even completely remove the section from the screen. You see the small handle on the left lower corner of the viewport? When you left click on this handle, and then drag it downwards, then the viewport will take over the screen space of the adjacent section. And here, it will take over the place of the timeline. However, you can also drag this handle upwards. In that case Blender will split the section into two parts. And now you can recreate the timeline from the editor type selector. Finally, by grabbing the borderline between the two sections, you can adjust the relative fraction of space they use on the screen. So, let's turn to the next section, the outliner. This section is located on the top right side of the screen. The Outliner is a very powerful tool for inspecting the entire content of your current scene. However, with its default settings, you can use it as a handy tool for navigating in your object hierarchy, and you even can easily select your objects with it. Right now, you see that the five objects of the scene are listed here. You can select an object by simple left click. You can select multiple objects when you hold down the shift key while left clicking. And you can disable the visibility of your objects by clicking on the corresponding eye icons. But let me turn back to the viewport for a moment. It is possible to select multiple objects here as well. In this case you hold down the shift key while selecting the objects with the right mouse button. You see also, that only the last selected object is outlined with a bright orange color. All other selected objects are outlined in a dark orange. The object displayed in bright orange, is also named the active object. Finally, you can deselect an object by right-clicking on it, either once, when it is the active object, or twice, when it was just selected but not active. And when you look at the outliner again, then you see, the same is true here, only that you have to use the left mouse instead of the right mouse button to select objects. The next section is the property editor. This section is located right below the outliner. The property editor has four general tabs, for camera settings, render layers, scene settings, and environment settings. Then it has an additional set of context-sensitive tabs, related to various aspects of your objects. The most important tabs here are the object modifier stack, 
the object data properties, and the material properties. Later we will get into more detail about how to use the property editor, but for now it is sufficient to know that it exists, and where you can find it. The last section of the current screen is a bit hidden. Actually you only can see the footer menu of that section at this moment. It is here, the info section. You can open this section by dragging down the borderline to the viewport. And this opens up a log window, where you can see all operations that you have called so far. Here you also will see any errors and warnings that might happen during your Blender session. However normally you will keep this section collapsed, and all you want to see from it, is its footer menu bar. By now we have taken a very quick flyover through the most basic parts of Blender. Of course this is just the beginning of all, and this video has only taken out some of the important features around modeling objects. There is so much more to tell about Blender, but now you should at least be able to get started, and I hope that it has become a bit easier for you to proceed with more detailed video tutorials. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.